Oh, hey, hey everybody. Uh, just doing some chores. Uh, just got some, uh, well, don't you hate doing laundry? Me too. That's why this isn't laundry. What is it? It's uh, some of the powders that I've been using for reloading. So, what I thought I'd do is uh, go through some basics of um, basics of smokeless powder and burn rates. Uh, there's a lot of confusion out there. Let me uh, move the camera a little bit here. There's a lot of confusion out there about um, what powders to use when you're reloading. And I mean, if you guys are into reloading or thinking about getting into reloading, this might uh, be of some interest. If you're not into reloading or never intend to uh, get into it, it's not the video to watch. Um, just uh, kind of going to try and keep it simple without getting into mu into too much of the chemistry part of of uh, what this is all about basically um, smokeless powder uh, was introduced um, almost back in the 1880s uh, there was some experimenting done uh, uh, with cellulose and um, some acids. Basically what eventually happened was um, um, they came up with what they call the nitrocellulose. And what that is is a, a, a wood or paper product, a fibrous product that's been uh, reacted with nitric and also uh, a lot of times sulfuric acids to produce a um, product called nitrocellulose. Um, this, in its refined form, um, is what people consider to be the uh, um, single base or the basis for the single base uh, powders. There's two uh, basic uh, groups, if you want to call it, of powders, uh, which uh, dictates also part of what we're going to get into in burn rates. Uh, there's the single base and the double base, and I'm trying. I'm going to try and keep it um, pretty simple uh, because it gets really involved with all the chemistry. Um, single base powders are basically your nitrocellulose-based uh, powders, and then your double base powders are your nitrocellulose that have nitroglycerin <laughs> added to it. So. Um, you can add, depending on the amount of uh, nitroglycerin you add to it, up to in excess of sometimes 50%, um, you increase the actual powder or power of that powder. Um, and sometimes, uh, unfortunately, it will result in a more dirtier uh, burning powder. Um, nitro or the uh, Smokeless powders have, ver <coughs> excuse me, have uh, various shapes, um, and I've tried to show this in the past on uh, some of my videos. Uh, the uh, there's these different shapes of the different types of powders. Uh, they can be identified as um, cylindrical or extruded. Um, there is um, flake. What else is there? Ball. Um, there's the size of these different shapes that also affect burn rates. Um, the larger flakes um, or the larger types of um, 
powders, i.e. the flakes, um, will burn slower. And you start getting into that faster, slower. Um, I'm going to put this up on the screen here in a little bit. This is kind of a, a list of all the major uh, powders. Um, and you'll see when I get it up that the fastest burning rate, uh, fastest burning powders are going to be up starting at one on the left and going down to the bottom right uh, will be your uh, your uh, slowest burning powder. Now um, the velocity of a powder and how fast it burns is um, a factor, as I said, of the type or chemistry of the powder and the shape and size of the actual grain of powder itself. Smokeless powder does not explode. It seems almost counterintuitive. Uh, it, it does not explode. Um, it burns very rapidly and releases a lot of gas and this is where the power comes from. Now there's uh, different types of powders for different situations. You have rifle powders, you have pistol powders, you have large caliber or large grain weight powders or powders that are more suited for the heavier grains you have powders more suited for the lighter grain bullets understanding how these burn rates affect the eventual velocity of your round and the pressures produced is very important and um, I'm sure it's kind of obvious uh, you get a fast burning powder in a heavyweight bullet the powder burns so fast produces the gas so quickly that that big heavy bullet hasn't got a chance to get moving down the barrel whereas you get a slower burning powder and you give that bullet the initial um, firing of the charge the gases start pushing that heavy bullet down the barrel you get more space from the seated point of the bullet to where it is starting down the uh, rifling so in other words where if a bullet was seated in a round and that powder just went off immediately you had all this pressure in this heavy bullet sitting there you're gonna have a big problem you get a slower burning pro powder and you give it a chance to get that round started down the rifling instead of it sitting right at the case head or right at the uh, uh, case mouth when the uh, charge goes off the slower burning powder starts that bullet moving down now you have a little more room for those gases to expand and then as it moves down you get a, a further expansion and you see it's kind of like a uh, pushing of that heavy round outside out of the barrel uh, gives the uh, the uh, chamber a chance to discharge the round without getting a, a uh, explosive uh, situation okay so just when we've uh, tried to categorize and get all straightened out with these powders, I thought I'd come in and sort of muddy the water a little bit. Um, with respect to the particle size of each powder, um, whether it's a, a ball powder or if it's an extruded powder or stick powder or flake powder, these will um, obviously affect burn rates, but more importantly, the actual chemistry 
of the powder itself, the, the ratios of, of nitroglycerin and the double bases and um, the types of um, chemistry that um, goes into the actual production of the powder along with the particle size um, makes a difference in uh, burn rates. And let's, let's take a look at this uh, as an example. One of the older uh, powders out is Bullseye. Uh, very, very um, fast burning powder. I believe it's um, number six on the chart or somewhere around that area. So it's, it's one of the fastest burning powders uh, as far as burn rates go. Um, being an older powder, um, this is one of my favorites when uh, putting uh, together loads for uh, 45 ACP and some other rounds. Um, very accurate, but a very dirty burning powder. Um, it's a it's a ball powder, and it it uh, being a small ball ball powder. I'll make a mess in here. I mean, it's almost sugar. Sure, how I can get this in the, in the lens there. Uh, it meters just beautifully. Uh, only downside to this powder is it it tends to be a, a very dirty burning powder, so your your gun cleaning chores are going to pick up with this one. So let's say, um, and earlier I mentioned that uh, flake powders burn slower than. Um, um, ball powders and and generally speaking that is true but then again you start adding in the chemistry of the production of the flake and that's where the the um, confusion can start coming into play for instance um, like I said this is a ball powder and it's like I believe number six as I said the number one fastest burning powder is nitro 100 or it's there pretty close to number one if it isn't number one and it's a fast burning double base but it's a flake powder um, it's a, a excellent powder um, because of it of its fast um, pressure buildup it, it, due to the speed of its uh, ignition um, it's an excellent powder for 12 gauge and, uh, trap and skeet and uh, light field loads um, now that if I had some that would be on on this end of the spectrum right next to my Sam Adams there because um, that's number one then you have uh, you know you're moving down you get bullseye you could also throw unique in here I think it's uh, some about two or three slots further down um, similar powders similar uses uh, this is a newer powder they started cleaning the powder burn rate up on this also a very, very good uh, uh, powder for the um, 45 and so forth. Um, with respect to accurate arms, other examples would be, for instance, uh, they're number two and number five and number seven. Uh, these are uh, slower burning uh, double base powders. Um, you, they were targeted, uh, for instance, the number two was uh, a very good powder for the 838 Special, number five was uh, uh, good for the 45 ACP, uh, number seven uh, uh, good for the 9 mil. you know. So each of these powders found their own niches as far as, as, as their popularities grew. Um, for me, and you've seen some of my videos, 800X is an IMR powder, and this is a um, flake powder, and I've referenced it in my videos as a horrible powder to meter. It's a uh, kind of like trying to meter uh, cornflakes, as I say. But um, if you check the burn chart or the burn rate chart it's somewhere around 60s and 62 or you know and, and moving towards the middle so you've got a good balance of of speed and uh, pressure buildup and um, 
this powder really lends itself to uh, heavier 10 mil loads, um, uh, heavier um, uh, 45s, uh, very accurate, very strong, powerful um, explosive force with this powder. If you can uh, yeah, deal with the inconvenience of having to double and triple check all your loads as you're metering these, this powder, very, very good powder to use. Um, moving further down, um, and again, uh, uh, another very, very fine ball powder, but it is a slower burning uh, uh, double base ball powder. It's probably one of the slowest ball powders that Accurate puts out, and because because it is a slower burning powder, as I said, it lends itself to the um, larger calibers. Uh, this uh, is an excellent powder for the 44 Magnum, uh, 357 Magnum, 454 Casul. Um, it's 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 a very accurate clean burning slow uh, slower uh, burning powder and as as such great for for those big calibers now um, moving into uh, the rifle range here's a 2230 uh, excellent excellent powder I use it for my uh, five five six rounds um, its burn rate is is even further down uh, the line as far as uh, a powder goes and again this is a nice small ball powder but again the chemistry is is taking control as to its burn rate lending it to its usefulness in the 556 five, round I use this also with my uh, um, tracer rounds it uh, is very effective at um, uh, lighting those tracer caps off so as you can see, there's really, really no cut and, cut and dry uh, answer to understanding um, burn rates, types of powders to use, other than getting down and, and doing the research on it. And that's basically the point of my video here is that don't just run out and, and listen to somebody's advice. Hey, you know, 44 Magnum, you know, number nine, use it. If you're going to do that, at least do the research and find out why you're going to use it. Um, maybe for what you want to use it for, or maybe the, the bullet uh, weight that you're going to be using uh, might be better suited to uh, maybe a little uh, faster burning powder if you're going to use a lighter round than what maybe your friend is using. So that, that in essence, is what I'm... Uh, getting at is, is the, uh, this, this, the, text the um, uniqueness, if you will, of and the uh, intrigue of, of getting into reloading, the chemistry of it, uh, the uh, challenges of getting the proper uh, uh, mixes put together and, and the excitement and content that uh, you experience when you start hitting the, that Ten ring with uh, uh, your own loads. Anyway, I hope uh, I haven't confused any, everybody. Um, uh, I do enjoy reloading. I, I hope uh, some of you can get into it if you aren't already. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or input, feel free to chime in. I'm always open for that kind of response. Uh, once again, Desert Gold out. Be safe.